What's up, y'all? Michael Lee back with Life Podcast. It's Friday, June the 30th, and I know I didn't roll one of these out last week, and I apologize. I was just busy in a cat covering crap on a marble floor. So with that being said, I'm here now, and your life is now complete. So thank you for your support. All right, that's a great show. We'll see you next time. Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, man, it's hot outside. I'm gonna tell y'all right now, it's freaking hot. You can fry egg on the concrete out here. Hands down, I will almost promise you, you can do that. I was cleaning my grill a while ago when I was spraying cleaner on it. It was evaporating with steam. My grill cover, like the, the shelf was so hot. Been sitting in the sun for a little while, but getting the grill cranked up today. July 4th is coming. Uh, gonna head down to the coast. We're gonna go do some saltwater fishing and hanging out at the beach. Hopefully we'll have a good, you know, time down there and everybody be safe out there and do your thing. Um, but where I'm going with this podcast is what I was talking about my grill. I'm going to talk about process and cooking and seasoning. I love it. I love to cook. Um, I'm not great at it. I'm not going to claim to be, but everybody does eat what I cook and they seem to like it. So I'm on to something, I guess. So that's appreciative and everybody that... Either tells me it's good or they lie to me. So either way, I'm all right. You know, it tastes good to me, and that's really all that matters, right? If you're the cook, don't you want to just cook it where you like it? And if anybody else doesn't like it, then that's their problem. I agree. But I got the smoker. I'm going to cut it on here and get it going in a minute today. Got my great friend, Davey Ferraro, his wife, Robin, uh, and their daughter's coming down to spend a night with us tonight. And then they're heading south to Florida in the morning, and we're heading to another part of Florida in the morning. So celebrate the 4th. But... Since Davey's come in, man, he's been a true inspiration to me. Uh, loves God, takes care of his body, a fitness guru, just a great resource for me. He has helped me immensely in my health-wise of my life since I was probably around 30 years old when we met. So that's been about 15 years that he and I have known each other. And I've dropped weight. Worked out more, just kind of got back in that routine that I used to have when I was playing sports. And then I just got tired of it. I quit for about five years. But a key part of my health, in my opinion anyway, is eating what I kill. Wild game, deer, turkey, uh, oryx, new found favorite of mine, axis deer, black buck antelope, quail, doves, fish, Anything that we harvest, and I use the term harvest because we've taken a crop, so to speak, a product of nature, such as deer meat, and we're eating that. So that's harvesting for the food. We kill it. We eat it. That's how we are. We love to do that. That's, that's in our DNA. It's in our soul. That is why we do what we do. Yes, it's fun. Don't get me wrong. But when it boils down to it, when you see that fresh piece of backstrap on the grill and you cut it with your knife or your fork if you really cook it right, man, that that's, mm, that's just the reward of it. So today I'm cooking pork ribs and I'm cooking wild turkey, two of my favorite things to put on a smoker. I happen to have a pit boss smoker. I'm not endorsed by a pit small, sponsored by pit boss in any way, so that's just what I use. I really love this smoker. It's the Laredo. Um, it's got Bluetooth on it. I can control it with my phone. I can check the temperature wherever I'm at. It's really, really handy tool. It's really good on pellet consumption, so I'm not just constantly putting pellets in this thing and burning it up. But it's just a great cooking tool. I've, I've had this thing for a couple of years now. I never had a smoker before. I have a big green egg, which I still love to cook on that, but that's more for, if I'm going to cook a steak, I like it on a big green egg, um, things like that. I, I don't smoke on the big green egg. That's just, I have just never have. Not, not anything wrong with that. Just hadn't been what I've done. So I learned how to, quote, smoke meat on the pit boss. So that's what my go-to is. We have one at my mom and dad's, a uh, place in our at our farm and we have a louisiana grill it's just a smoker similar to a traeger or whatever at our hunting camp and we use these things all the time they're great for cooking anything really so with that being said um some of my favorite things to cook are is, is deer i love cooking backstrap on there 
Uh, the way I do that, I you cook the back straps whole. I, I will I season everything that all the meat that I cook. I, I I love. I'm a big fan of meat church seasoning. Not endorsed by them. Not sponsored by them. Just what I like. My brother-in-law Matt Brinson turned me on to their seasonings. I like those. I like Rufus Teague. Um, Charlie's Choice is a great seasoning too, especially for red meat like steaks. Um, I don't know. List goes on and on. I got rendezvous seasoning is good on ribs. I, I've, I got all kind of little things that I like. Um, but what I'll usually do is I use some kind of binder. So a lot of people use mustard, um, olive oil, cooking oil, whatever. I, I like avocado oil. That's just my preference. I coat my meat on that with that. I season it real uh, extremely liberally, especially when I'm cook, slow cooking something for hours like ribs because you're going to have a lot of the fat break down and drip out and you're going to lose some of your seasoning that way but if you coat it really good you'll end up with a great coat of bark on that and that's what i call it anyway i don't know if i think that's the right term i'm not a smokeologist i'm just me i just talk about what i know and how i know how to do it but i put them ribs on there i like a dry rub if you want to put barbecue sauce on there sauce on there you're not gonna make me mad i just don't do it you can do it at the end um but that's, that's for my ribs. My wild turkey, though, this is something that I just tried one day. Same deal, cover it in avocado oil or olive oil. Season it. I like fajita seasoning from Pit Boss for it and um, voodoo seasoning from Pit I mean, not Pit Boss, Meat Church. Um, I like those. I apply liberally, if you will. And then I put that thing on there about 220. I cook everything around 225 for the most part. And then um, my ribs take five or six hours at 225. I get like to get that internal temperature to 205. That seems to be like everything I've read, that, that's what everybody said to do. So I tried it. Of course, the, most of you read it enough times, it's probably going to work out. So it did 195 to 205 makes some phenomenal rib temperature. Well, you can eat them at 165, but they're not going to pull off the bone. They're going to be tough. But the key to me with ribs, and I know I'm dancing around different, you know, meats, but with ribs, I don't want them to fall off the bone. I don't want to pick up the rib and the meat fall off. There's a lot of people say, oh, they're falling off the bone. That's so good. Well, that is good. Don't get me wrong. But I like it to pull off the bone. I want you to hold the rib bone, and then when you eat it, the meat pulls off, like in your mouth. That, to me, is a good rib. That's my opinion again. I'm not a smokeologist. I've just done it enough to know what fat kids like me like to eat. So, with that being said... <clears throat> That's kind of a synopsis of ribs. The turkey, though, I season that. I put it on there for 225, and I get that temperature to around 160, 165 internal. And I just stumbled on this one day. I had a good coat of seasoning on there. And this is a whole turkey breast, a deboned wild turkey breast. So if all y'all that turkey hunt, y'all clean turkeys, y'all know what I'm talking about. And, I, and you can do them whole like this, too. I've done at Thanksgiving like a whole turkey Man, it was some of the best I've ever had, too. Something about smoking that meat at that low temperature for that amount of time, it really seals in the moisture. And when you slice that turkey up, oh my goodness. I like to cut it like in, almost like it looks like strips of bacon, that thin and, and long. Man, it's so good. And when we'll cook a couple at the time, we'll eat some that day, then we'll throw some in the refrigerator, have it for, you know, sandwiches or just eat it by itself throughout the next week or so. You can cook it like that, vacuum seal it and freeze it if you want, and then just pop it out whenever you want to eat some. Like, I mean, it's really sustainable and I love it. Like that's, you know, that's two, that's three of my favorite things. Other, like I said, backstrap. Um, I'll cook those whole, season those real good. I like Charlie's Choice, I the Meat Church lines, just the different things. Coat the meat really well. Um, and, and, and part of the processing part, I didn't want to skip too far of that. I really trim the meat up. Like I make sure it's good and clean. It's really hard when you clean a turkey, man. You get feathers, you get you got BBs, you know, you, you've got some trauma in those turkey breasts a lot of times. I try to cut all that stuff out so there's no fouled up parts of the meat. I try to get all that gristly fat off the turkey breast. Same thing with backstrap. I try to take all that, that silver membrane looking stuff off. I like to trim it up. Just like if I'm going to try to eat a, a really, really good steak, I want to trim that up so that, you know, you're getting all the, you know, whatever you want to call it, imperfections, if you will, out of that. So when you eat it, there's not a tough piece. The seasonings can soak in real good. You can get that coating all over that meat. 
I cooked that back strap hot though. I'll cook that thing. Um, I'll put that on my big green egg a lot of times and I'll do that. I'll get that thing up to seven, 800 degrees and I'll cook it for about a minute and a half on each side. I like it rare. Um, but I like a, a warm, rare, you know, warm pink center, if you will. And, and deer meat in case it's going to be a warm red center, uh, cause it's a darker tint to it. But, uh, take that, that back strap if you can a couple of days before you want to cook it, take it out, wash it off, kind of let let it sit in your refrigerator on a plate with just the air circulating around it, it'll start breaking down and it just makes that meat a lot more tender. It also gets that kind of iron taste out of it from the bloody, you know, part of the meat. Um, you don't have a lot of that with like a steak from a cow because they've got a lot of marbling. Of course, it's been processed and slaughterhouse to packer to meat market distributor to grocery store and it's kind of been handed down the line and processed like that deer meat no that comes right off of my deer and goes in my freezer so i hadn't had anybody's hands on mine <laughs> hands on my meat but um i do use processors for stuff like uh, hamburger meat and, and cube steak sausage and all that I, I wish i had the time and the resources to do it all myself i really do but uh, there's just not enough hours in the day so I have to rely on some of my great local processors here in South Georgia to, to do it up for me. And then they do a great job and, and some folks in North Florida. But with all that being said, it's a really great way to cook. Uh, eating wild game is extremely healthy. Everything that comes out of the wild like that is really, really low in fat. It's not like a grain fed cow that's been pasture in a pasture and then fed out and they're, they're made to grow fast and, ra and and rapidly to uh go to the sale that's how farmers make money cattle guys make money and I mean, there's nothing wrong with that but when you boil down to it yes i love eating a steak as much as anybody they have a great flavor and if you get the right cut of meat it can be one of the most amazing things you ever eat but wild game totally different i can i can cook a back strap if I have enough time and can do it right, and I, I've, I've done it before, I've, I've cooked backstrap, I cut them up a little, like, just like a, a really, really lean fillet, and people have eaten it, and they swear that they were eating a, a steak from a cow, not a steak from a deer. I'm just saying, you can do it, and nobody's going to know the difference. Hamburger meat, man, nine times out of ten, nobody even knows where you can deer meat. Sausage is the same way. It's all about how it's prepared, it's how it's, how it's cooked, and the taking the time to do it right because there's so many people that oh i don't like deer meat i don't like deer meat well why well because i had it one time it didn't taste good well, what didn't taste good about it? oh it tastes really gamey or it was really tough or well i'm not knocking whoever cooked it but that could be the problem it may not be the meat it might be the cook i mean i can go eat some chicken that's horrible at somebody's house too that's just because they don't know how to cook it's not my fault it's not your fault it's just the way life is we move on but with all that being said um, I like low and slow on cooking meat on the smoker. Of course, that's kind of how it was designed. Uh, you can do re great reverse sears on a smoker as well. Well, you can take a steak or, you know, backstrap and, um, cook it at about 200 degrees, 225, get the internal temperature around a hundred, take the meat off, wrap it up in tinfoil, let it, let it rest, then jack the heat up on that grill to, how's it'll go let it get hot several you know 350 to 400 to 500 degrees whatever you like take that meat and sear it on there for about a minute or so on each side that's some good stuff i'm telling you i've done it successfully many times we cooked some steaks in turkey season here they were almost they were probably around a pound a piece my buddy chris cooper bought these things it was me chris my dad mike lee and one of our camera guys jordan break um Jordan was the only one that ate his whole steak because we just, we could, I only ate steak and I could not finish it. That piece of meat was so big, but it was one of the best steaks I've ever had in my life. We did that reverse here, what I just said. I love it. So good. So good. So good. Well, hopefully y'all picked up something from that. If you listen to this, go to uh, Facebook, Michael Lee or Instagram, Michael Lee Outdoors, whatever. Like shoot me a message. You can hit me up a, a email, M Lee at Michael Lee Outdoors. And um, I'll reply back, I promise you, if you send me an email. 
And uh, if you have any questions about recipes, cooking any of this stuff, please hit me up. Let me know. I'll try to help you the best I can. I'm not perfect at it. I never will be perfect at probably anything in my life other than rambling on about stuff. But um, 4th of July is going to be here in a couple of days. Get out there. Enjoy time with the family. Don't get too hot because it's pretty daggone warm out there. <clears throat> enjoy our National Day of Independence. Hoorah, we got them. All right, y'all be good. Thank y'all for listening. I'm Michael Lee, Backwards Life Podcast, episode whatever the heck we're on. That's a wrap. Thank y'all. Hey y'all, it's Michael. Thank y'all so much for listening. I appreciate each and every one of you that hop on here to listen to my foolishness every week. I really am thankful for all of y'all. Enjoy the outdoors and God bless.